Welcome, welcome to the World of Warcraft art panel. Please join us in welcoming to the stage members of the World of Warcraft art team. Welcome to the World of Warcraft art panel. Uh, my name, all right. My name is Rob Foot, and I'm the uh, senior art producer on World of Warcraft. Um, I'd like to take a minute to thank all of you for coming, especially early in the morning. Uh, it's especially impressive considering how many of you I watched close out the Hilton Bar last night. So, let me give you a synopsis of what you're going to see on this panel. Uh, We've got a lot of great things to show you, and what you're going to see is the, the work of over 40 of the artists on the World of Warcraft art team. Uh, they've been hard at work working on our new expansion. I don't know if you've heard of it, it's a Mist of Pandaria. So the Pandarian are something we've really wanted to do for a long time now, and we're really proud that we've been able to actually dedicate an entire expansion to the Pandaren and to their lands. We've also been in production for a long time, so this art panel, we've got a lot of content to show you. Now, to introduce you to the rest of the art team, I'm going to hand it over to the art director and my friend, Chris Robinson. Thank you, sir, and friend. Enemy. Ouch. Uh, so we literally created a massive amount of content for this expansion. Um, and there's way too much to show you. We'd be here all week if we wanted to go through everything we've done. So uh, it's been very difficult to pare down. We think we came up with a pretty cool show for you guys. Uh, but before we get rolling with that, I just wanted to take a minute to introduce you to these people. So first and foremost, you know Rob Foote. I, got some, I have some pictures here. If I can get this thing to work. There we go. There's Rob Foote. Produ production mastermind of the universe. You know me, Chris Robinson, art director, and apparently I'm also a crazed homeless person if you look at this picture. <laughs> Mark Gibbons, uh, who you may not recognize because uh, he actually took his makeup. Uh, this is what he looks I like. Do, I can do the face. There you go. <laughs> so we require that he wear this makeup at work um, because we can't communicate with him if he looks like, like he currently does, but he wanted to show you all his beautiful face, so. Thomas Blue. Thomas Blue is our uh, character art manager and our lead technical artist. Um, he's also a millionaire in WoW, so whenever I need a loan, he's the guy I go to. <laughs> Gary Plattner, lead environment artist, part-time pirate. And uh, actually, this is pretty cool this year. We, have, we actually have a programmer up, which uh, when I created the graphic, I put some binary code behind him so that you could tell that he's a programmer. He lives in the Matrix. Uh, and he also, he was going to wear a t-shirt that said, not an artist, specifically, but uh, I thought the code was sufficient. So, um, cool, collected, German. Wendy Vetter, lead dungeon artist, also known as Darth Vetter, purveyor of finer things, which you gentlemen should be aware of. And uh, last, last but not least, the most serious member of our art management team is uh, Eric Browning who also appears to be from the future. <laughs> uh, so that's about it for introductions. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Mark Gibbons. And yeah, me. Talk a little bit about concept right. art. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, here we go. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the introduction. Um, You're welcome. Will the Warcraft concept artist. Uh, it's not to say I'm the only artist on the WoW team that does concept art. We have a, a, an amazing selection of, of guys and girls who are great sketch artists as well as being um, 3D modelers, texture artists and so on. What it really means is I'm the only guy whose skill set is so narrow I can't do anything else. Um, but the, uh, our, our player community has, uh, uh, has some other names for me. Crayon, crayon Wielding Monkey, I was called uh, just the other week. Wildly, wildly inaccurate, as you can see, if you look at the magnificent illustration there, I'm a pencil-wielding monkey. 
Uh, it's also been suggested that I be uh, <clears throat> rendered down into soap. Uh, I like that one. Um, they weren't specific about a fragrance. Uh, I'm thinking um, uh, rum and eraser, possibly. So you might be asking, well, what is it, Mark, that you do on a daily basis that would provoke such a uh, passionate response from uh, a certain section of our community? Well, it's, uh, it's this. Yeah. yeah. You're applauding. Uh, since, uh, since tier 10, um, I've been responsible for the design of, uh, of all raid sets. So what I thought I'd do today is start by talking a little bit about the, uh, uh, the process, the design process that I go through to create these sets. Um, it all starts with a, a brief from design. Um, it'll usually just be the title of the set and maybe a couple of lines of, uh, of explanation uh, if there's a, a particular theme or uh, materials that they want to see in the armor. Um, and then I'm left to my own devices. Uh, and I approach it as I would um, you know, any other assignment. I, I look for sort of cool visual hooks, uh, ideas to hang a, uh, the design off, and a little bit of a backstory. I mean, for my, for my benefit, if nobody else's. But what I realized as the tears started to appear, and, and as I got to hear what the public thought of them, um, I realized that players care more about the way that their character looks than anything else in the game. Um, and if you, you give them a, a set of armor, and you ask them to wear something that they're disappointed in, they will tell you about it uh, loudly and at length. So um, I realized that, that although there's a, there's a lot of humor, there's a lot of whimsy in, uh, in WoW, and I think players, in, players embrace that, they really don't like it if you're lighthearted um, with their characters, with, unless they're gnomes, because the gnomes embrace the city. Right. Uh, so here's a, here's a, a small selection of, uh, of sets from tiers 10 and 11 that um, proved pretty popular. Um, and one of the things that um, I find myself doing when, when the ideas come through from design is, is sometimes a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of wrestling over the ideas to try and to make sure that hopefully what I'm doing is cool and, and it's going to be something that players like. And the, um, the shaman set in the middle there, the, uh, Frost, which is Garb, is a good example of me turning around to design and saying, uh, uh, can we do something else? Because the original brief was, um, the title came through and it was Vestments of the Five Elements. And my reaction was, <laughs> bollocks. Five elements, so it's earth, air, fire, water, and... Um, love. Love, says Eric, bless him. <laughs> you romantic old bugger. Could be love, could be bubblegum. Um, I, I, either way, it wasn't gonna be, you weren't going to be able to create a, a hangar, solid, cohesive design if you had to cover that kind of range of stuff. So I, I went back to design and said, can we, can we try again? And, and uh, to their credit, they said yes, um, and they said, oh, what about a, a Vrykul themed set, because this was in Northrend. Um, and I had a design for a, a Vrykul boss that never made it into the game. Uh, he had a huge shovel tusk skull underneath his cowl. Um, so I showed that to design again, said, yeah, we can do with that, we can, we can build a set around that. Um, and that's what we ended up with. And I think it's a mark of the, of the set's success that, um, when I was here last year, somebody had built that costume. And I think if somebody's going to go to the time and effort, gluing all that cardboard together, sticking all that plastic, and wear it for two days, it's, it, I probably did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The other thing I try and do is, um, is up the epic every time when, when the opportunity presents itself. Um, and that can, be, that can be tricky, that can be quite a balancing act because the, more, the bigger and the more elaborate uh, uh, the armor gets, the more potentially unwieldy and, and you, you run the risk of doing something a little bit ludicrous. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important that we, we try and uh, push, the, push the envelope um, when the opportunity presents itself. When, when you get a design through, or uh, a design come through and, and, and give you a brief for something, you think, oh, I think we could do something that's a little bit outside the box here. It can polarize opinion. You can sometimes get people who, who you love it or hate it. I personally, I think that's preferable to just, eh, it, it's all right, it's okay. Eh, I don't mind, I'll wear it for six months. Um, I would rather have people love and, and hate the stuff. I mean, the um, Paladin set in the middle yesterday, again, saw somebody walking around with it in, in that outfit. And I, I wanted to go up to her and say, I'm sorry you've got to drag that around with you all day. But she seemed to be having a good time. So, um, tier 13, the latest lot. Uh, I've plucked two, uh, two examples at random, um, the Paladin and the Priest. Now these, are, these are, uh, are traditionally some of the hardest ones to get right, or certainly to make kick ass. Um, it's very easy to make a cool death knight, you know, it's a skulls, horns, black, plate mail, it's, 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 it's pretty straightforward business. But the Paladin and the Priest are um, tough to make, uh, tough, really. But I think these work really well, I mean design gave me a, um, a, a great briefs to work from. 
Um, the paladin, it, I mean, he's still got that uh, classic chivalrous Arthurian knight, but the, um, the feathered armor, the, the feathered blades of the, of the set really, really give it a, a, an aggressive stance. So I think it works really well. The priest, I think, is even better because it's, um, it's very, I mean, to make a priest set that's edgy, that's a little bit sinister, a little bit creepy, um, it's, it's quite a challenge. And design suggested uh, a Venetian uh, uh, masquerade costume uh, and, and a blank uh, staring uh, face. Um, so pulling those together, uh, I mean, I think it gives priests an, uh, a chance to do something that's a, a little bit different, a little bit badass. And uh, um, I mean, hopefully, moving, moving forward with that stuff, we can, do, we can do more of that edgy stuff in the future. And talking about the future, I mean, what are we going to do next? Where, where can we see raid sets going? Um, it would be nice at some point uh, to go to a fully componentable system. So instead of it being um, helmet, shoulder pads, gloves, belt, boots, we can actually do the whole, a whole set of armor. So every, every piece is modeled individually. Um, we can put effects on individual pieces. We can, we can have them um, animating a little bit. Um, plus, we can, we can hang attachments like swinging chains and uh, gemstones, all that sort of, all that sort of stuff that makes making something epic uh, a, little bit, a little bit easier. You know, the, the, the players are getting a, a broad, cooler silhouette, all that little detail. It was actually rendered rather than being you know, overlaid on, a, on, a, on flat material. So that's, um, that's Ray Dharma sets. What I want to talk a little bit about now is um, Mr. Pandaria and the Pandarian themselves. So what do we know about the pandas um, currently in game? I mean, other than the, uh, the wandering brewmaster, I mean, you, there's not a great deal of, of background there in WoW. Uh, so it, it really, meant, really meant we went back to the drone board, did a lot of research. Um, I, I um, you know, we, we're asking players to come and uh, explore this, this, this new continent. So we had to make sure that we, we, we built it from the, from the ground up. We built the law, uh, the, the, the history, um, uh, the culture. So um, end of last year, we started doing research, researching a lot of, um, of Asian myths, um, the legends, the, the, the culture, the history. And one of the things that, that um, um, design was keen to point out, that um, the, the Pandaren are a race that are at peace with themselves. That's pretty unusual for World of Warcraft, you know? There's no petty factions, there's no rivalry within, within Pandaren society, but we still, you know, to hang quest lines off, but we still have to have that, that, that depth, that breadth of, uh, of story and history. 